I normally don't mix a lot of colours on my palette. I prefer to let the paint blend together on the paper, but I found that I needed to do a bit of mixing for this little frog. I had no intention of painting another frog, but when I saw the reference photo that I used to paint this one, I couldn't resist. I'll show you the reference photo soon. You might remember this frog that I painted a few months ago. I talked about a technique called charging, where I drop one colour onto another colour while the paper's damp and the colours melt into one another. I did that a little bit on this new frog, but I also used another technique where I put some paint down on the paper and then I lay another colour next to that first colour while it was damp and the second colour bled into the first colour and that created some lovely effects. The reference photo was taken by Michelle Kaiser and I bought it from Wildlife Reference Photos which is a great site to find lots of different wildlife photos that you can paint from. I'll put a link in the description of this video. I used Arsh paper for this painting. This is cold pressed 300 GSM or 140 pound paper. I stretched it before I painted on it. I put the paper in landscape orientation and I pushed the frog up the top of the paper so that I could have a drip of paint coming down underneath him. I also had a play with the frog in my journal before I painted the main painting. I used greens and other colours straight out of the tube for this frog, but I found that the colours were a bit overwhelming, particularly the greens. So I decided to mix my own greens instead of using the pre-mixed greens. I also mixed up the orange that I used on the feet as well, and I was a lot happier with the colours on the main painting. So you'll see me do a little bit of mixing in this video. I started getting out the colours that I thought I'd need. That's Indian yellow, some cadmium red. These are Windsor and Newton colours. That's Windsor blue red shade. Got some cobalt turquoise light. And I'll get some burnt sienna as well. I'm going to mix Indian yellow with Windsor Blue to make the green for the reed or the stalk that the frog is sitting on. I want it lighter than that so I'll put a bit more yellow into it. I want a brighter green for the frog so I'll use some Windsor Lemon instead of the Indian Yellow and I'll mix the Windsor Lemon with Windsor Blue for that green. I've painted on that olive green that I mixed up with the Indian yellow and Windsor blue. This is going on to the reed that the frog's sitting on. I've faded the colour away down the bottom, but up near the frog I've got a bit more colour. Now I'm dropping in some water to create some watercolour blooms which will disturb the pigment. Create a bit of texture on the reed. That's that section dry now, so I can continue on up further. I've filled in the rest of the reed with that green that I mixed up. And I've put some watercolour blooms on there, as I said. And that's created that texture that's on there. I'll mix up an orange now for the feet. I'll use cadmium red and Windsor lemon. I'll mix the two together. I don't want to put the colour on too dark at this stage because I've got other colours to go on over the top. I'll mix a bit of water into it so that it's not too dark. That orange that I just mixed up, I'm using to paint in the feet now. I'll paint all of the feet in with this colour and I'll paint them on dry paper. I masked off the white highlights on the feet before I started painting. As I said, I don't want this colour to be too dark just yet because I've got other colours to go over the top when I add the detail. Now 
I'm starting to use that green that I mixed up for the frog from Windsor Lemon and Windsor Blue. What I want to do on this arm is put the other colours on and let the colours bleed together. So I've got the green on there first. Now I'm starting to paint the orange onto the foot. And when the orange touches the green, it's still damp. Those two colours will bleed into one another. So here they're touching now and you can see that the orange is running into the green. Now I've got some indigo on my brush and I want the indigo along this top edge of the arm and I want it to bleed into the green as well. And that will give me those lovely soft loose edges that I'm looking for. Now I've got some cadmium red on my brush and I'm dabbing that onto the edge of the orange there while it's still damp. I want to leave that arm for now and I'm going to get some colour onto the body of the frog. In that area I'm going to need a darker colour for the shadows. So I'm mixing a dark bluey grey here with burnt sienna and Windsor blue. So now that that darker colour is mixed up and ready for me, I can start to paint in the body of the frog with the main colour. This colour is Daniel Smith's Buff Titanium. This colour will sit underneath the other colours that I put over the top. I'll paint this area wet on wet so that all the colours will melt into one another and create some interesting loose effects. The first colour I'll drop in is the orange that I mixed up for the feet. Now that I've got the orange where I want it, I've picked up that darker shadow colour that I mixed up from Windsor Blue and Burnt Sienna and I'm starting to paint that on now. I try not to fuss with it because I want to see three distinct colours here. I don't want it to all blend into one and create one new colour. I have to dry it off now because I've got more work to do underneath the mouth. If I started to paint while the paint was still wet, the work that was going to go underneath the mouth would go over the top of the mouth. So I need to dry that off so that I can re-wet it. I also don't want to disturb the work that I've already done. I want it to sit the way I've got it. So I dry it off and that sets it. So now I can re-wet the area underneath the mouth where I want to work and I'm not worried about the paint going up onto that little section of mouth at the top there. That keeps that area lighter. So I pick up a bit more paint and then I put some more paint on there. It's a bit darker this time so I've taken the water out of my brush. Down here I'm going to do the same thing. I want the colours to blend into one another. So I'm working on wet paper here. I've wet it with water before I started putting the paint on. Trying to get in and around the toe here with this darker colour. So that's the same colour that I used on the body. I'm continuing it down now underneath the reed. I'm painting carefully around the toe there because I don't want to get any paint on it. I painted the green and the orange on this section earlier just after I painted in the reed. I put the green from the frog and the orange from the toes onto that area and then I wet it with my spray bottle 
and I let the paint run down the paper. So that area has dried. I've re-wet it and now I'm able to bring this darker colour onto this section to form the bottom of the frog. Now I'm going to drop some cadmium red in there just to add interest to it. I need a bit more colour on this lighter section so I'm using my wet brush to pull some of that colour over the top. Even though these wet on wet areas look loose and random, I put the paint on deliberately and carefully and I think about what I'm going to do before I do it. Here on the toes I've painted another layer of the orange around the outside edge to create the rim that's there. Now I want to paint some cadmium red on. I've wet the paper here because I want the paint to bleed across the toe. I use the reference photo to guide me as to where to put these darker areas of colour, but I don't follow the reference photo exactly as I see it. Here I'm softening the paint edge. Now I've decided that I want the colour to be bolder, so I've wiped my wet brush over the pigment to get it this dark. So rather than pick up the watery paint that I've mixed on the palette, I'll wipe my brush over the pigment itself. And that gives me that really bold, rich colour. So the paper is wet where I'm working. Up here on the frog I'm starting to paint in the head and this other arm. I'm using the green that I mixed up from Windsor Blue and Windsor Lemon. When that green paint is all washed in I'll wash the paint out of my brush and I'll pick up some Windsor Lemon and I'll drop that onto the lighter areas of the green. I've got some Windsor Lemon on my brush now and I drop that on to the damp green paint. I'll pick up a bit more. I'll put it over here. When that first layer of green paint is dry, I can paint on the darker areas of the frog's head with a darker green. I mixed the green for the frog with Windsor Lemon and Windsor Blue. To make it darker, all I have to do is mix a bit more Windsor Blue into the mix. And that's what I'm using here. So I paint it onto the dry paper. Then I take the paint out of my brush. And I use my damp brush to soften the paint edges. I washed both of the eyes in with the orange that I used on the feet. Now I'm re-wetting this right one with water because I want to paint some cadmium red onto it. I'm painting the water on there because I want the cadmium red to bleed in from the outer edge. I want this cadmium red to be fairly dark so I wipe my brush over the pigment rather than use watery paint. The other thing I do is I roll the tip of my brush to get the point back. I run that around the outer edge of the eye and it bleeds in towards the centre. If there are any edges that I need to soften, I take the paint out of my brush, take the excess moisture off it, and then I use the damp brush to soften away the paint edges. And when that paint dries, I use some lamp black to paint in the pupils. Then when I've just about finished the frog, I need to see if there are any areas that could be a bit darker. 
Here I'm increasing the colour in the shadow area with some indigo. Just take the moisture out of my brush and I can spread that paint out. Push it where I want it. I want to put some indigo over here as well. I've wet this area with water. Now I use my clean brush to soften away the edge. And there it is. I had a lot of fun painting this little frog and I hope you enjoyed the video. As always, a like is very much appreciated and please subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you next week with a new video. Enjoy your week. I'll show you the reference photo soon. You might remember this frog that I painted. I had no intention of painting another frog, but when I saw the reference photo I used to paint this one, I couldn't. 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 You might remember this frog that I painted a few months ago. I talked about a technique called. A technique. normally don't mix a lot of colours on my palette, I prefer to but I found that I didn't particularly like the colours, they were a bit overwhelming, particularly the greens, I'm saying particularly, particularly. I also mixed up the orange that I used on the hands, hands, frog's hands. And I push the frog up the top of the paper so that I could have a bit of a drip of paint coming down on underneath him. Down on, on, down on, on, down on, on, before I painted on it. And I painted the frog in landscape formation. And I painted it in landscape orientation. And I pushed the frog up to the top of the paper so that I could have a bit of a drip coming down underneath him. A bit of a drip. You're a bit of a drip, Louise.